Craig Adams here from WeddingFilmSchool.com and today I'm just going to kind of go over what my thoughts are behind using sliders during weddings. So I've been using them for about two years and I've upgraded from my Canova two foot slider to this 1.3 foot slider uh, made by Edelkron. And this is the kind that slides and moves as you, you slide it. Um, it, it extends as you slide it, I guess. And I'm very happy with this. And this is the one I've been using for um, probably all my weddings this year. So if you ask anyone who actually owns and uses these, it's definitely a love-hate relationship. Um, they're wonderful shots and they're wonderful tools, but you can overuse them. Um, I kind of shudder when I'm watching a, a, a short film or a wedding film online, and I see uh, two slide shots in a row, and then a third, and then a fourth. I, I immediately click off, I just can't handle um, that kind of uh, filmmaking is just it's a crazy idea, but um, you definitely don't want to overuse it. You want to mix it in with a bunch of different shots. But then again, who am I to know exactly what you need to be doing? Um, it's just how I feel. I definitely try to never use two different slide shots in a row. Um, if I do, it's definitely got to be for a good reason. So next, I wanted to show you an entire wedding and then in chronological order, all of the slider shots that I shot uh, for the entire day. Uh, this was a wedding up in Vermont and I was actually shooting by myself so it's a little bit of a interesting situation but nonetheless I had my slider and I had plenty of time so I used it quite a bit. So this was the actual rehearsal before and I had plenty of time to work with this and this was a very basic shot so when I first got there I found them and then I had time to go outside to get an establishing shot and the moray is terrible on the side of the house but I like it when there's motivation the people walking towards the building so i'd get a slide of the flower and then i kind of wanted to get a little more advanced different type of shot um once again basic shot and then i did some kind of focus pull so if i get a good shot i usually get an advanced shot that's tougher um, i saw this sign and then i also want to get more of a dynamic shot so i usually pop off two shots so once I got this pull with a, a slide to the side and then I got a tighter lens, I think this is 100 actually. And then this didn't really work because my ball head was really bad so I couldn't tilt down easy. So I like this shot, this was a good slide and pull down but then I waited and these people showed up so I like this same kind of push in move with the people, got a basic slide and then I got the advanced version, just one that I may use. These were ba very basic, you know, establishing, didn't have much time. Came back to the bride and groom. That shot was kind of sloppy. Yeah. I liked to uh, use the light in the background of this, so I kept it going. Um, this shot didn't really work so well just because of the tungsten on the right side. Um, I had the groom waiting for the first look, so why not do some kind of hipster foot stuff? I had plenty of time to kill with the, the portraits. This is a ceremony. And then I had this establishing shot to show where the reception was, so pushing through the fence was a cool idea. Um, I got to work with the room before anyone got in there. Um, I shot these a couple of times, you know, I started basic, very simple, and then I wanted to do one kind of looking down as I pulled back. It adds a little bit more movement, and it's good to have light in the background because it gives you that bokeh. So I pushed in, of course I did my basic one, and then I did a little bit more of advanced, so I have a choice. Um, there we got the table. For circular things, I usually like to go around. You know, you gotta move the eye from card to card. And I got this basic shot of flowers and I like to have stuff in the foreground. So I think the foreground adds an element to it. So that's good. Um, this was a very basic, you know, wrap around the pillar to reveal that. And then just, you know, add a little bit of motion to show the depth of the room. So if you study cinema or you uh, pay attention to what you're watching, TV shows, movies, whatever, you'll notice that a lot of shots are, um, are just chock full of motion. Um, they're usually by a glide cam, crane, or a movie, or most of the time a dolly. Um, so you could just picture a slider like a mini dolly and um, just a person walking down a hallway you'll you'll start to notice like usually we'll have just a little bit of motion or something um, so when you're watching stuff try to be aware of that and a lot of filmmakers use motion like this to add depth so just like in uh, composition as far as lighting you want to add depth to your subject using shadows and highlights 
Um, you want to add depth to your filmmaking shots and composition by using motion. So to just give you a quick little example, I'm going to hold my hand out. So this is the foreground. The camera and monitor are the focus and my subject in the middle ground. And then you'll see the reflection and wall is the background. And you'll see these all moving in a parallax way, all at different speeds. And that gives depth to your image. It allows the viewer and the audience to kind of get a better sense of what this environment is like. Um, if you're just doing a shot in the forest, a wide, and it's static, it's way harder for the brain to process what is going on and where you are in the woods and what it actually is like. If you're, uh, it's, it's harder to do that than if you're slowly pushing through the woods. You get a sense of what's closer to you and what's farther just by the speed in which it's moving. And our brains can process this because this is what we deal with every day. As we walk and move, this foreground is moving way faster than the camera and then just like in the background, you know? So our brains are very wired to understand this. So as of any tool, you know, there's basic and advanced different ways to use it. And I'm still learning the best ways to use it. Um, you know, you definitely usually just start as soon as you get it uh, with this normal, just side to side kind of motion. And that's usually, you know, a pretty good go-to. A lot of people then move towards a kind of push in dolly effect. And with this slider, you know, it's, it's, you can actually, so the trick is to not see this part right here and it actually moves as the camera goes forward. So this, this kind of move actually works really well with this Edelkrone slider. Um, so yeah, that's one, another kind of basic movement. And then, uh, the next step that people usually start to realize is that they can pan their uh, tripod head as they slide side to side to get even more of a kind of movement around a subject. So that really places the emphasis of the eye on the thing that's in the middle that you're moving around. So I guess like the next step in this kind of uh, technique is to start using the ball head and you know a fluid head on top of your slider to get different slots, shots going up and down as you slide. And of course you can add the whole element of focus into your slides of any of these techniques to move the focus in or out to rack as you do a slide. And of course, you know, this takes one hand going this way, one hand tilting up, and then one hand to focus and watch what you're doing. It can be a little tough. So it totally depends on the kind of shot that you're going for with what lens to use. Um, I switch between the 24, 35, and 50 a lot of my sliders. Um, you know, if you're pushing through something, you kind of want to be a little wider so that you can see the foreground, um, especially the ground if you're pushing through like a hedgerow or something. Um, uh, on a tighter lens, you wouldn't see what's uh, closer to the camera as much unless, you know, it's it's harder to push through things. And then also for like push in and pull out shots, you know, there's different feelings that go in. So if I'm going to establish that we're moving towards uh, uh, a reception, we're, we're moving in there from a transition from the church ceremony, um, I usually will do a push in to symbolize that it's more inviting, we're going into this environment. And it'll usually be one of the first shots that I use in a short film. So I'll usually push in towards it. And then obviously a pullback is definitely more of an ending kind of shot. If I've got the couple kissing and I'm down on the ground doing a shot where I start down and then I pull up to reveal them kissing, it's definitely kind of an ending shot. I put that at the the tail end of a, a film. So if you have any comments or questions about using sliders during weddings, please leave a comment below. If this video helped you in any way, please give it a like. I would love it if you did that. But until then, thank you for watching. See ya.